They are known as assault-style weapons and have been used in some of the country's deadliest shootings. From Uvalde, Tulsa, and El Paso to Parkland, San Bernardino, and Sandy Hook, the high-powered assault rifle has been the weapon of choice for many of the killers. Light is hot. The Los Angeles Police Department demonstrates an AR-style semi-automatic rifle for us on the department's gun range. You have a 16-inch to 20-inch barrel. You have a stock that is shouldered. You are going to be accurate at farther distances as opposed to a pistol. Not to mention, like some other weapons, it can fire a bullet with enough power to pierce soft body armor, something Sergeant James Zaboravan knows firsthand. Oh, Jesus. It's definitely an automatic weapon. He took assault weapons fire during the now infamous 1997 North Hollywood shootout, where two bank robbers wearing body armor fired on police for nearly an hour, injuring eight people and 12 officers, including Sergeant Zaboravan. You're being hit with pieces of the vehicles we were hiding behind, uh, asphalt, uh, radiator fluid. Felt like we were being stung by bees. That shooting changed policy, prompting the LAPD and other departments to upgrade their own weaponry to counter the increasingly powerful guns used by assailants. That firepower from weapons is studied inside a ballistics lab at Wayne State University, where researchers simulate a bullet's impact on the human body. It's a block of 20% gelatin, and it's meant to represent the human tissues, so soft tissues. Watch as Cynthia Burr's team fires a handgun round at 1,000 feet per second into the gelatin block. For this particular round, you'll see the bullet come in on this side. You see this temporary cavity here happening. So that expansion is what happens in the body, and then it collapses down. So that's where your damage comes in. Now watch as a team fires a round from an assault rifle. We see a lot more disruption. This round actually breaks apart. It doesn't exit, so it's about 3,000 feet per second, and all of that energy goes into the soft tissue. Um, we have a piece of plastic here to reflect to do the videos, and it actually lifted the plastic up off the table with the energy. An aftermath photo of the handgun round shows a relatively straight line through the tissue, exiting the other side. But not so with the round from an AR-15. It basically goes into the body and creates an explosion inside the body. Trauma surgeons say the wound from an assault rifle can be catastrophic. And the worst part is in a child, all the vital organs are that much closer together. So each of those bullets causes, you know, irreversible damage. In Uvalde, Texas, families were asked for DNA swabs to help the authorities identify their children. As a mom, it really affects me, right? Because um, I cannot imagine having a child endure this. And with high capacity magazines, suspects can shoot for much longer. Now the discussion about high capacity magazines largely centers on reducing the amount of time that a suspect can fire without having to reload. As a former FBI agent, we were trained to quickly get your weapon reloaded and back up on target. But for a suspect, for example, who isn't trained, you can see using this training weapon, that is a process. It involves removing the empty magazine, obtaining a fresh round of ammunition, loading it into the weapon, charging the weapon, getting it back up on target. Those are all precious seconds where victims can be fleeing, the gun can jam, or the suspect could be engaged by law enforcement or bystanders. Knowing the damage that sustained firepower can do, researchers hope their critical findings lead to awareness. Regardless of where one comes down on the gun control debate, it's indisputable that the assault weapon causes significant damage inside the body. Definitely, but this is the reality. This is what's happening. 